Hello there and welcome to my workshop. Uh, today I'm going to be machining the cutouts you see here on this hand wheel. It's a cap for a displacement oiler for a steam engine. Uh, this is the steam engine. This is a, an engine I've been working on for many months. Uh, it's all manually machined. Uh, majority of it here in my home workshop. Uh, the uh, purpose of the engine in the in the in the you know the end game is to actually run a uh, a micro power station for charging mobile phones. Funny enough, uh, you'll see the displacement oiler is quite a bit bigger than the uh, the engine, so it's it's not meant to be scale. It's meant to give uh, maintenance free operation for you know for a couple of days. Um, you'll see here the the sight glass lets you know when the the oil and water level is uh, is to the point where you can open these valves. Uh, these are all manually machined valves. They're not uh, they're not an off the shelf item. Uh, you'll see the uh, cap has already been machined. I machined this a few days ago. Uh, once again, all manually machined. This is an 18 by 1.25 thread. Uh, the cutout in the end here is just to pull some weight out of it. There'll be a, an O-ring that fits uh, fits up into here. And uh, today we're going to machine the cutouts here. You see, it's only decorative. The the they serve no other purpose than other than to to match the uh, the smaller ones that we've got here on the on the needle valves. So you'll see this, this item screws in here. Okay. As it is, it looks a bit bland, so I want to I want to uh, make it look a little better and make it a little easier to operate as well. Without the cutouts, around, without the outside, you'll see uh, there's cutouts here. Their their only purpose is to let you get your get a better grip on it. So uh, so anyway, I'll take this over to the milling machine and start setting it up. So I'm at the milling machine. Um, this item here, you'll notice there's a there's a thread here. Now normally if I didn't have a collet chuck I would machine a boss uh, with this thread in it and I'd um, put a slit down one side so that I could grip this with a with a chuck and I'd you know obviously nip it up and then uh, grip that on with the chuck and use that in a rotary table to do this work but because I I don't need to because I've got a collet chuck I'm going to use a C5 collet chuck. So I'm using an 18 millimeter collet you can see it does up at the back here there's a key to stop the the collet from turning. So that goes in there like that. Now these these collets hold within about five microns metric, so you know we're talking you know a third of a thou sort of accuracy. There they're pretty good. So I just put that heart up against the shoulder in the back there, so it should run pretty true. And I'm just going to use the vise just to uh, just to nip this up. Now, because that's gripping on the entire surface of that thread, it'll uh, it'll take that load without damaging it at all. So, I'll go ahead and put that into uh, my rotary table. I'll show you the setup there. Okay, so you can see my rotary table is bottled down. There's a clamp on each side here holding it down. It's only six inches. You can see it's not huge. So, uh, it gets a bit trying when you're doing bigger jobs or trying to hold uh, like collet blocks. So, I use a ground V block here, and the, the V block is pretty much permanently on my rotary table. It's been set up many times. I, uh, I square up one edge and then I put the, the collet block in there and, and then I clock it so it's running true. So you can see that fits fits in there nicely. And then I've got a purpose made clamp which um, goes around the outside. So I put a, an old piece of a V block that I've been keeping for years for this purpose. It goes on there like that and then a purpose made clamp just goes around the back. Now the clamp I, I water jet cut. So it's a purpose made clamp. Um, it just grips in there nicely. But it you know it doesn't have a lot of adjustment but it serves this purpose perfectly. As you can see now you can rotate it around and the clamp the clamp doesn't foul on anything and it's not much bigger, you can still get your hands to the clamps. So what I what I do now, I know this, this V box already set up, but I'll I'll just clock the top of this job. Now this is a micron clock by the way guys. Every division every division on it is, is two metric microns. So so here to here is one thou imperial.
Right, as you can see, that dial's not moving. So I'm going to go ahead and call that zero, where well, it's actually the digital readout's already reading um, 01 and 02, so it's 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 within, you know, it's less than a thou for a hand wheel, that'll be fine. Okay, you'll see here on this hand wheel, there's a 10 millimeter radius, and it lines up with the center of this spoke. So all I do is, when I'm doing these uh, drawings, because it's being done manually, I put dimensions, you'll see here, to the center of each radius, and then a width from the center line. And this, this one here lines up with the center line, so all I've got to do is take a, a 20 millimeter slot drill and go out 30 millimeters, and then just plunge it, and then rotate the rotary table around every 30 degrees, and uh, to create these cutouts. So you can see I've got a, a cutter in there, so I'll go ahead and, and start. Now when, when you're working with a rotary table, um, you never ever go backwards, um, unless you know the backlash in your, in your rotary table. I've got these locks set up very, very gently, and I'm just coming up on the zero here, and watching the zero here. When, the z when I come to the zero, I just nip this up gently, and I'm going to turn the spindle on now. So. Now I'm just going to rotate 30 degrees, doing the same thing each time in the same direction. Okay, that's the cutouts done. Now I've just got to change cutters, and I'll I'll change over to because of the size of the window. Uh, I would normally just plunge these corners first. So this one, this one, uh, these here, and then I rotate and do that for each spoke. That gives me an idea. I don't bother marking out. I just go straight off digital readout and the rotary table. But uh, you'll see I've got these dimensions here, and rather than straining to see it on the drawing, I always just take notes and bang it on the back. So when you're on the machine. It's a bit easier for you to spot. I'll change the cutter out. So when I'm making these cutouts, you can see here I've got a, a three millimeter slot drill. Uh, it's a tungsten carbide one, so it's fairly rigid and it run a bit faster than tool steel as well. Uh, what I what I do is I go around and I, I go positive in in a, or, you know positive away leaving material, and then I'll I'll rough all this out and leave about point two everywhere, and then I come back and climb mill the finish just so you get a nice uh, nice finish on the inside. I don't try and go straight to size. Uh, the cutters will always flex, especially small ones, or if you want that nice finish, it's worth the extra time to do a finish pass. So uh, I'll, um, like for here where it's 10.11, uh, I'd go about 10.3, and I'd go minus 2.8 um, to get away from this radius, and I'll just go around and plunge each one of these corners into four points, and then I'll rotate 60 degrees, and then I'll do it again.
Now rotate. Alright, so I've done the uh, roughing out of the holes, which is effectively the way I, I mark the job out. So now I've got to go ahead and, and rough the rest of this material out. There's a bunch of ways you can do that. Um, you can, you know, if you game, you can push this cutter straight through there and you'll get a bit of chatter because this is quite big and only three millimeters thick. But I'd be inclined just to, just to plunge the uh, majority of this out and do a, a path around the outside here and, and just remove it as best as it'll let me. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to vibrate too much, and don't want to break the cutter in there because whatever time you save going fast, you're only going to lose when you have to stop and set up another tool. Okay, next I'm going to machine this section around the back here and I'm going to leave the centre attached. And the reason I'm going to do that is when I'm roughing this last little piece out, this, this bit in the middle is going to become loose, jumping in there and trying to break the cutter. Hopefully it'll just drop through. Okay, now I'm just going to move back in, move this to the, the zero point again, or the nearest 60 degree mark, and I'm just going to move this uh, x axis, sorry y axis, back into to 10.3, and I'm just going to finish roughing that area there out.
Okay, now I'm going to go to the uh, inside corner here. I'll take the rotary table back to the nearest 60 degree mark and I'll bring to the finished size. I'll plunge here and I'll go out to this far corner and I'll do this on these four, uh, sorry these six, and then I'll do a finished pass on the outside and the inside and it's finished. Okay, now that I've finished doing the spokes going out in the hand wheel, I'm just going to finish this edge in here. So I'll take the cutter out to this corner, I'll plunge in to the dimensions, which are uh, minus 2.63 and 16.54 in Y, and then I'll uh, swing a radius from there to there, finishing the outside on each one. Now you see the outside of each one's finished. I'm just going to come in and do this inside corner here. Now I've got a couple of options. I can leave it on this side, but I actually prefer to bring the tool back across uh, past zero in the Y and, and put the tool on this side. So I do the finishing of this radius where I can actually see what it's cutting. Okay, and that's it, it's finished. Okay, I'm back at the bench. and You can see I've pulled the part out of the machine and uh, given it a quick once over on a, a 3M light deburring wheel. It's a very fine uh, abrasive felt, I guess you'd describe it. Uh, it's not a scotch right buff. It just breaks any sharp corners, puts about a, a 0.05 millimeter or tooth hour radius on the corners, makes it very friendly to your skin and, and does it very quickly too. So, you know, it's, it, you don't need to be overly good at hand skills to to get a really good looking part. So, uh, but yeah, that's the component. It's it's quite an attractive piece. I'm I'm quite happy with it. So that's the that's the displacement oiler. Um, all finished except for just maybe two standoffs on the back to mount it on the finished box, and a bit of brazing work. But um, yeah, it looks good. If you, uh, if you like this video and found it useful, please hit subscribe. Thanks.